In today's video, I'm going to teach you guys the basics about zero accounting in under 20 minutes. My name is Henry Gruvier from SA Accounting Network, and I've been in the accounting industry for probably about 16 years since about 2008. So I've been around the block a couple of times when it comes to bookkeeping systems and stuff. And today I want to give you guys a quick overview or just to show you some of the basic stuff about zero, of how to do invoicing and how to do supplier stuff, banking, reporting. Just, just going to touch on, the, on a few basic stuff when it comes to zero accounting. And before I head down to my computer to share guys what I prepared for you, remember to give the video a like, remember to hit subscribe, and then I also want to invite if you want to sign up for zero accounting there's a link in the description of the video if you click on that link you'll see there's some nice special offers that zero is running that is linked to my obviously my to refer link itself so yeah so go check it out to see what they offer and now uh, there's definitely some good specials down there for you let me down to my computer and then i can show you guys quickly what i've prepared for you for today yes so as i mentioned today i'm just going to browse around a little bit quickly on the on the demo company just to give you guys a brief overview of what it looks like on, on zero accounting and what you can expect and stuff so normally once you sign up for for zero obviously you're going to go through a little bit of a process where they're going to ask your email address contact number uh, your addresses and stuff like that you're going to register and once you register once you lock in the first time you're going to be welcomed with this dashboard of you obviously i'm at the moment working on my demo company so which we can just go and fiddle around you'll see when you lock into zero accounting as well um, where you choose the companies at the top, you will also have the option to go to the demo company. The nice thing about filling around in the demo company is you can test invoices, test quotes, get yourself familiar with the program before you go onto the live system to actually do stuff on your own bookkeeping system. So yeah, do go check out the demo company. It's worth definitely fooling around a bit there. Yeah, so when you log into um, Zero, you will obviously be, be welcomed with this um, with this dashboard. And there's a couple of things. You obviously have a bank, business bank account. You've got an account watch list, which is really, really nice. So you can keep track of what's happening inside every account. And you see for every one of these widgets, there's certain things that you can adjust. So you can click on that button over there. Then you can see that you want to edit the account, um, the, the account watch list, edit your budget. So so shows the budget column. So I'm going to just switch that off so that you guys can then see. So you can see it only shows this month and the year to date. But if I switch on my budget column itself, then you can see that it actually pulls in that budget column as well to say what you budgeted for those specific expenses, what your expenses is for the current month and what your year to date expenses. So it's always nice to go onto this dashboard just to get like a quick overview of what's happening inside your businesses. And it's always nice. Obviously, the purpose of, of running an accounting system is to keep a finger <clears throat> on the pulse when it comes to expenses. So this is a really nice function that it has to keep an eye on specific accounts. Business bank account, we did talk about that. You can see here's a cash in and a cash out. So obviously, we're just working on a demo company here. So I can see what happened in every month, how much money came into my business account, how much money went out, and what the difference is. And I'm going to show you guys a little bit more in detail about reporting just now. And you can see we can talk about um, how to add budgets. And this is quite cool to see invoices owed to you. So you can see two draft invoices, 10 awaiting payments, 8 overdue. And then we will talk about just now where you can get some more information. Obviously, I'm going to show you guys how to do the basics about invoicing bills that you need to pay so this is also really cool so if you buy stuff from suppliers where you've got supply accounts with specific people then this is a nice functionality to use because then you can keep track of who you owe money for for how long and then the expense claims as well is also really cool where you can load certain expense claims if you've got people working for you so you can see Heinrich Rubier which is me I've got five expense claims to review so <clears throat> this budget and uh, this dashboard as well you can edit it there's an edit button so then you can go say that you want to don't want to see certain things you can take that out you can take that out and then once you finish with that you say save changes and then you can see that it updates your dashboard according to what you, you know, what the preferences that you made so if i say edit budget i will edit dashboard i can go tick these things again to switch them back on again you can see here's a second business bank account i'm just going to say save changes then you can see how it changes your dashboard so i think that is a good starting point just to get like a quick overview of what is happening inside your accounting package. So remember, the core of any accounting package is basically the bank account, your invoices that you make out, and your supply invoices. So those are the main things or the, the backbone of any accounting package. And that is what I want to show you guys quickly. So how to get to those different things. You can see you've got a button there for new sales invoices. You can see here's one for new bills. And obviously here's the one for the banking. So maybe let's first go have a look at the banking because remember, 
If the banking is correct, then 90% of your accounting package is going to be accurate. So that's really, really important to make sure that your banking is accurate and everything balances over there. So that's important. So I'm just waiting for this screen to open up. And what's really cool about Zero, and I think a lot of accounting packages these days does it, is that you can go and link your, your, your bank account itself. Um, and your, 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 they call it a bank feed that it can link to zero accounting. And then what happens is that bank feed imports all the transactions on a daily basis. So when you log into your system, it's going to give you that, uh, that little screenshot to say that you need to reconcile 26 uh, items or whatever the case might be. Then you just go through those and things, make, make sure you do allocate them to the right place. And what's really cool about zero, it, it actually memorizes certain transactions. If they pick up a certain um, description, let's say for instance, you're putting in fuel and from engine is the like a, a, a fuel supply here by us in South Africa. If it picks up engine, then every time you, when they see that word, they're going to recognize it as fuel and it will automatically put it into that account. So all that you need to do is just to confirm whether the selection that Zero made for you is correct. And same with your customer invoices. When customers pay, it's going to show in your banking itself that there's a deposit that came in, <clears throat> let's say for instance 5,000 USD, matches to a specific uh, customer, then you can just say, okay, whether that is the correct um, allocation for it to do. So here we go. Yeah, so when it comes to the bank, and I said this transaction will import automatically once your bank feed is linked. And you can see like, here's a good example. So to say which way university, uh, deposited 6187.50 USD and you can see there's my invoice that matched that one so all that I'm going to say is okay and you can see you've got different things you've got, you can say match create transfer discuss so I'm just going to match that thing so you can see the tra second transaction was a smart agency four and a half thousand rand you can see that if there's a, a, a supply invoice that matches that then we're going to match it over there if it's not, we're going to create something. So I'm just going to say over here, we're going to say smart agency, agency. You can see at the moment, it, it has it. There's a quick yes, yeah, it already has it. And if this was it, it points us for advertising, we're going to choose advertising. Yeah, you can <clears throat> write in a description if you want to, but obviously the accounting itself advertising if I can spell <clears throat> then um, then the account that, that, that you're going to be putting it in is um it, it's going to obviously discuss what it, what it was for so you can just leave it like that and for now I'm not going to worry about um about working with that because I think we can deal with that in a separate video and then you just say okay so you can see a truck some property management so previously there's a supplier invoice that was loaded for trucks and property management for 1181 so we're just going to say okay because it matches it automatically you can see there's a deposit that was paid and you can see we have a 15 rand retrail banking corporation so that was a bank charge then you can just say okay so that is how basically i can just run through the transactions so the banking itself on zero is really really cool like i say you have the option to say match if this is a customer invoice or supply invoice to create so if there's something specific that's not um that there's not a supply invoice or custom invoice for you're going to say create you're going to type in who it was for what it was for the account that you can allocate it to <clears throat> you can enter the reason why and then obviously you're just going to hit okay so once that is done then obviously your banking would be done so it's not a difficult process you just need to spend a little bit of time and the nice thing about zero is that it picks up transactions for by itself so if there was a deposit let's say for instance for gateway motors it will pick up that there's outstanding invoice for gateway motors and you can see that it matches the deposit against outstanding invoice so it does the majority of the work for you which is really really cool so i think that is just in short the banking itself if you have different bank accounts <clears throat> on the drop down of here you can choose between the different bank accounts and that is the basics about banking so let's maybe quickly shoot back to the dashboard so remember the banking like it says 90 percent of what happens in the accounting system is your bank account you must make sure that your bank account balances then once you're back to the dashboard you can see over here's the option where you can go to new sales invoices and then you can see there's the one for new bills but what i want to do is if you click on the business button you can see you've got the same options here but it's a bit more expanded you've got invoice online payments, quotes, sales, overviews, bills to pay, purchase, so all the stuff with supplies are down here and you can see your invoices at the top. So let's maybe run down to invoices. So just to show you quickly what the invoice screen then looks like. So if you invoices, you can see up here's a lot of different invoices that's created. And I'm just going to say new invoice just to show you, but you can see the different 
<coughs> options that you've got. You can either go make a new invoice, you can make a new repeating invoice. So this is really, really cool, especially if in the services industry, like we are accountants. So we, a lot of our clients, we we invoice on a monthly basis. So for our clients, we would say that we're going to create a repeating invoice that for every month that same invoice must go out. Then you can see there's credit notes. So if you maybe invoice something incorrectly, you can create a credit note. You can send statements, you can import invoices, you can export invoice reminders, you can switch off and online payments. Yeah, so let's quickly just look at the invoice. So if I say create a new invoice, then you'll see that it'll open up the screen over here where you can then go and capture your invoice. So you will start firstly with a with a with your contact. So I think we're just going to choose somebody from a list over here. We're going to choose 711, the invoice date. So there you can choose your invoice date. I'm just going to leave it as today, the due date. So normally when you load a customer on that customer screen, you would say what the default terms is for the customer. But I can just go and say plus 15. And if I press that, then you can see 15 days from now, it will show what that, um, that the due date would be. The invoice number gets generated automatically. Reference numbers, if they work with purchase order numbers, you would put that in there. Branding theme, you're going to leave it as it is, currency USD, and you can see your tax the tax amount is tax inclusive, no, no tax or tax exclusive. So I'm just going to leave it without tax. So you do have the option to choose items to say that you want to do developer work or whatever it is that you're busy doing, or you can go create a new item, or you can just go straight in here just to say that you did consulting, and then the consulting work that he did was for one hour and the price there was 1500 There's no tax involved and then that is basically what your invoice would look like. <clears throat> so now you can either say preview, save and close and approve an email. So if I say preview, just to show you guys quickly what the invoice would look like. So the invoice itself, um, you'll see that in the setup of the company itself, I actually did a separate video on my channel as well, where you can go do the basic setup. You'll see that on, on this video, there's part of a playlist. So in that video, you can go see how I can put your logo in, how I can put your contact details in, your, your currency, your region where you're on, all that stuff. But this is basically shows you what that invoice would then look like. And obviously, your bank details will be at the bottom. You can put in your terms and conditions and all that stuff that you can customize on that. And then for now, so that is what the invoice is going to look like. And then we're just going to say, uh, I think for now, let's maybe say approve an email just to show you guys quickly what the screen then looks like. So you can see now it opens up a thing to say and send an invoice. And you can see the basic template that I'm going to use. This is the invoice that I'm going to use. And then we can just say send an email. So I'm just not sure where that's going to go through because obviously on the demo company sometimes it does give me an error. Um, yeah, so you see invoice email didn't send, but it's just because I'm busy working on the demo company. That is the reason why that happened. So let me quickly show you guys quickly with quotes as well. So quotes is also really, really cool. So it works on exactly the same principle as what you would do with invoices as well. So you can see that you've got um, different quotes that you've done. And you can see there's the button to create a new quote. So then you would go and then obviously do exactly the same as what you did in the previous screen. So you're going to say once again, who's the contact that you're going to be using? We're just going to use 7-Eleven once again. We're going to say the issue date, the 30th, the expiry date, let's call it plus 30. The quote number, and then you can see the reference, if they work with the purchase order number, branding, all that stuff. We're going to leave the same. I'm just going to just take tax off because we're not going to worry about tax. And then here we're going to say consulting. And then this time, let's quickly do that, and we're going to say 3,000. And then after that, you've got the same option over there to say send, and then you can email that through to your client. So once you've got your quotes done, I just want to quickly just shoot back to my quotes. Uh, no, wait, hang on, press the wrong button now. So if I go to business, and I go to quotes. So if so, your client of yours comes back and they send up, they definitely want to go ahead with the quote that he sent them, then you have the option of yours well just to convert those those invoices over to quotes itself. So I think that's a really cool function to be able to with, work with, with invoices and quotes and then obviously you want to send the invoice through to them for them to receive it and to make the payment. <clears throat> Let's quickly shoot back. So bills to pay. So if you work with suppliers, then this is the place where you're going to load your supply invoices on the screen of here. So once again, it's very similar to the invoices side, but now we're just working on the other side of the coin. So now, we're going to say that we want to create a new bill. And we're going to use, let's say for instance, somebody uh, that uh, they already used. We're just going to say net connect, net connect. So that's the same. 
we're going to use that the due date again we're going to say plus 15 and tab the reference if you've got a purchase order number and then you can see over here there's now the option to start working with items so you can say that you bought let's print that one over there that one and the, the price there is 500 and then you can load it and then you just obviously say approve and then you've got your supply invoice loaded on your site so now it would show that we've got the expense in today's date but that shows that we're still outstanding that we still owe them the money um yeah so that is um obviously how it works with your supply invoices so I think we, we did cover the dashboard itself, we did cover the invoices, we did cover the supplier stuff. And then the next thing that I want to show you guys quickly is just when it comes to reports, because I think the reports is one of the 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 really, really cool functions about the zero accounting. And I think that is where they're very far advanced compared to other accounting packages as they're reporting. So if we go to accounting, you see over there is the button that says report. So I'm going to quickly go to reports, then you'll see that I've got a couple of different reports. And this is, like I said, what I'm get really, really excited about when you're using zero. You can see um, at the top at the moment, I've got some favorites over here, but you can go, go um, tick some other boxes as well to say that you think that your budget summary is also a favorite. So you can go tick that. And then as soon as you do that, you can see that it brings to the top of your, of your reporting screen. And you can see, yes, lots and lots of reports. You can spend days and days and days going through these reports over here. <clears throat> so quickly show you. Obviously, profit and loss, I think it's a really cool report to use. And I think any business needs to understand what a profit and loss is about and how it works. So just one thing to remember that the, those transactions inside the bank and that we haven't reconciled, it doesn't reflect yet until we've done that step. So at the moment, that information doesn't con uh, include those, those transactions. So you can see, by default, it opened up the income statement for the month of July. And you can see you've got different options here to say this quarter, this financial year, last month, last quarter. So there's a lot of different options. And what I really, really like about Zero is that you can say that I want to compare this information for the past three months. So instead of only looking at income statement for one month, I can then go and see what happened in the previous months, what happened in July, what happened in June, what happened in May, what was my sales, what was my cost of sales, what was all my expenses and whether I made a profit. For each one of these transactions or one of these amounts, if you click on the amount itself, it actually opens up that specific account so you can see what is what um, consists or what makes up that specific amount itself. So that is really, really nice to be able to see what transactions are inside that account so that's really really nice so that is the profit and loss i'm going to quickly run back to the reports i want to show you guys the balance sheet as well that's also a really nice function so if you go to your balance sheet same thing over here it's going to pull a balance sheet that's at a specific date and one of the things that i really love about zero is that you've got the comparison or you can pull up comparison data so i'm just going to say that i want to um, pull a balance sheet for the end of june and i want to compare that with uh, three months and then I say update. So what it then does, it pulls a balance sheet for me for the end of May, end of June, end of April, and I can see what the movement was inside each one of those accounts because that is really, really important when you analyze balance sheets to say what moves between different accounts. If you had 10,000 rent in your bank, business bank account end of April, 20,000 rent end of May, then you can see that your business grew by 10,000 rent. So I think balance sheet, if you understand how to read a balance sheet, I think is probably one of the best reports that you can use. And then I think the two other reports, which is really, really cool, is the H receivable summary. So this one is also really, really nice. It's a very standard report, but it shows you who owes you money for how long. So you can see it gives you the different options to say month one, month two, two months, three months. What the amounts are and once again if you click on that amount it will open up the different invoices that makes up the thousand seven hundred rent that they owe you you can see over here you can adjust this to say that you only want to look at um, three months instead of two four months then you can see that it's just going to change the columns <coughs> so instead of us having all the columns here uh, come on press update and then you can see now we've got only got two months and then all that. So that's really, really nice. If you've got a big data book, you can go back to say that you want to have a look at 12 months. So the same report, if I go back to reports again, and this time we're going to look at, um, at suppliers. So this time we look at H payable summary. So this is for all the people that you owe money for. So as soon as you load the supply invoices, then uh, it will uh, uh, appear over here if you haven't allocated the payments on the banking. So the same thing over here as well. You can have a list of all the different suppliers that you that you pay. 
So that is the, 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 the nuts and bolts about zero accounting on my YouTube channel. I've got a couple of videos where I dive a bit deep into each one of these sections, so please do go check that out. But the purpose of this video is just to give you guys a short summary, just the, the basic pointers and just the basic instructions of how zero accounting works. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to hit like, remember to hit subscribe. Check out the description in the video for some nice um, special offers that Zero might be running that's linked to my referral code. And I'll see you guys for the next video.